Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Mary's Cathedral. The programs for these mass, this mass is, looks like this, and the young lady walking around on the red, in the red jacket has them. So if you do not have a program, please raise your hand, and she will come and bring one to you. Okay, please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. <laughs> Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that though in our weakness we fail, we may be revived through the passion of your only begotten Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, 
forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of prophet Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one with whom I am pleased, upon whom I have put my spirit. He shall bring forth justice to the nations, not crying out, not shouting, not making his voice heard in the street, a bruised reed he shall not break, and a smoldering wick he shall not quench, until he establishes justice on earth. The coastlands will wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spreads out the earth with its crops who gives breath to its people and spirit to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you for the victory of justice. I have grasped you by the hand. I formed you and set you as a covenant of the people, a light for the nations to open the eyes of the blind to bring out prisoners from confinement and from the dungeon, those who live in darkness. The word of the Lord.
as Christ. Praise and honor to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus proclaimed the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. Praise and honor to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Six days before Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. They gave a dinner for him there, and Martha served, while Lazarus was one of those reclining a table with him. Mary took a litter of costly perfumed oil made from genuine perfu aromatic nerd and anointed the feet of Jesus and dried them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. Then Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, and the one who would betray him, said, Why was this oil not sold for 300 days' wages and given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief and held the money bag and used to steal the contributions. So Jesus said, leave her alone. Let her keep this for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The large crowd of the Jews found out that he was there and came, not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. And the chief priests plotted to kill Lazarus too, because many of the Jews were turning away and believing in Jesus because of him. The Gospel of the Lord. We have now entered into the holiest week of the year. The church considers this, the holy, holiest week indeed gives the week that name, Holy Week. The second part, of course, is the culmination of it with the sacred Paschal Triduum beginning a Thursday evening commemorating the Lord's Last Supper. These first three days of this week, the church prepares us for that great Paschal Triduum through the parallel readings at Mass on this Monday Tuesday and Wednesday of Holy Week. First, we hear in the first reading from the prophet Isaiah, the suffering ser servant Psalms, this figure Isaiah prophesies about that foretells the person of Christ, who Christ will be 
uh, prophecies about how he will be treated and what he will do to accomplish the salvation of God's people that we reenact during the Triduum. Then in the Gospel reading, we see the, and hear about the growing tension between Jesus and the leaders of his people, the final moments of what led to his, his arrest and his conviction and execution. And tomorrow and Wednesday, scenes from that last supper he had when he gave them that great final discourse. Today we get a glimpse really into the human side of Christ and of the whole situation. As John tells us, this is six days before Passover, so just a few days before the end. He knows the end is near. He knows this is going to happen. What does he do in these final days? He goes to visit his best friends. Lazarus and his two sisters, Martha and Mary, were very dear friends of Jesus. They were like family to him. So he goes to them, to Bethany, John tells us, where they held a dinner for him, they being his best friends, Lazarus, Martha, and Mary. They receive him into their home, these moments of consolation for him before he submits to his death. We also see in this interaction signs of how the disciple is to welcome Christ into his or her life. We see this represented in the figures around Christ at this meal. Martha, of course, as usual, is the one who is serving. She's busy about doing the chores of service. Certainly, a life of faith means a life of service, means generosity with uh, serving uh, those who are in need, serving the needs of our parish, but out of a relationship of love. Mary is the one who's more uh, contemplative, more uh, wondrous, more the one who enjoys the company and soaks in our Lord's teaching. And we see here this gesture of great extravagance, this costly oil, a large amount of this costly perfumed oil with which she anoints our Lord. Such extravagance. Judas, of course, the one to betray him, was always thinking about money, especially for himself, sees in very kind of practical human terms a waste, but not the one who knows how to love. Extravagance is the language of love. Those who really love the Lord are extravagant in their love for him. We cannot do enough to please him and to spread and share his love. So our generosity with our time, spending time in prayer with our Lord, those precious moments in which we can focus exclusively on a relationship with him, listen to his voice calling to us, try to understand his will, presenting to him our needs and our petitions. And that love then, of course, spilling over into that generosity of service, again represented by Martha. Generosity with our treasure in the virtue of almsgiving, a necessary part of Christian discipleship. Another acts of charity as well, serving the poor and the needy, generosity with our talent and our time in a life of service. Lazarus then represents the goal of it all and what lies ahead for the faithful disciple. He is the one Christ rose from the dead. That is the, the destiny of the believer who follows Christ in his way, in his way with that extravagance of love and of service, sharing in the Lord's resurrection, which we will joyfully celebrate at the great East, Easter Vigil Saturday night and Easter Sunday. Let us ask the Lord for the grace during this week to enter into the true spirit of these liturgies that we too might be disciples with the heart formed for welcoming our Lord in a life of prayer, service, and almsgiving.
Dear brothers and sisters, being mindful of the Father's great kindness and mercy by sending us his Son for our salvation, let us strive to continue to walk with him in ways of truth, repentance, and compassion. With confidence in his great love for us, we turn to him with our prayers. For Pope Francis, Archbishop Cordiglione, Father Kevin Kennedy, pastor and rector of our cathedral, and the entire church throughout the world, that being strengthened to faithfully proclaim the gospel, the message of salvation may be embraced by all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all world leaders, that they may see that in the gospel of Jesus Christ, we have an unfailing guide. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the followers of Christ, that they may not be afraid to profess their loyalty to him before an indifferent and sometimes hostile world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick or suffering in any way, that they may know Christ's presence and seek comfort in him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, that Christ, the just and merciful judge, may grant their souls a place of eternal rest, light, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this holy mass, for the eternal repose of the soul of Elvira Andrada, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Strengthen us, dear Father, and deliver us from all evil. Hear our prayers and encourage us in ways of faith and hope. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just say. 
and heal us where our sins have wounded. Attende Domine, et miserere, quia peccavimus tibi. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of the hand for the praise and glory of his name. Look graciously, O Lord, upon the sacred mysteries we celebrate here. And may what you have mercifully provided to counsel out the judgment we incur, bear for us fruit in eternal life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished, and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty, and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with this in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Plenis uceli et terra, gloria tua. Hosanna in excelsis, benedictus, qui venit in nomine domini. Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. May holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei. Mortem tuam annunciamus, Domine, et 
tuam resurrectionem confitemur, donec venias. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and me, our unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Precepti salutaribus moniti, et divini institutione formati, ad ehemus dicere. Pater noster, qui es in celis, sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in celo et in terra, Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et dimite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, se libera nos amalo. Libera nos quesimus domini ab omnibus malis, da propitius pacem in the ebus nostris, ut ope misericordiae tu eliuti, et a peccato simus semper liberi, et ab omni perturbatione securi, expectantes beatam spem, et adventum salvatoris nostri, Iesu Christi. Quia tuum es renium et potestas, it gloria in secula. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look, not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. A new stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. A new stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, Miserere nobis, agnus Dei, qui tollis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I'm not worthy that you should not turn on the roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
We invite properly disposed Catholics to come forward to receive Holy Communion, and others present today are invited to join in prayer and song. The standard procedure for receiving communion in the United States is to stand. If you prefer kneeling to receive the Eucharist, please use the kneelers which will be provided. Let us pray.
Visit your people, O Lord, we pray. And with ever watchful love, look upon the hearts dedicated to you by means of these sacred mysteries, so that under your protection, we may keep safe this remedy of eternal salvation, which by your mercy we have received. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Pardon for the blessing. May your protection, O Lord, we pray, defend the humble and keep ever safe those who trust in your mercy, that they may celebrate the Paschal festivities not only with bodily observance, but above all with purity of mind through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Oh.